I right, appreciate everybody being out. Uh, it's been a good week of practice. Uh, I'm excited for our guys to get an opportunity to get back on the field after a full full week. Uh, a lot of intentional work, and, and hopefully it shows up uh, against a good football team. Just giving you guys a little uh, just injury updates. Uh, Cash, you know, during his work on the side field on Wednesday, very, very close, but just not quite there. Um, so we decided to, uh, you know, allow him to continue his progression through his rehab and uh, hope to have him next week, but he will not be available. He'll be out this weekend. And then Taki uh, Taimani did, uh, you know, during our padded, uh, kind of padded work, he did um, experience uh, kind of just a normal run play, uh, a couple bodies uh, going down. He did get rolled up a little on uh, that ankle, uh, so he will be out uh, for the game as well. Uh, more than likely, Levi uh, Drake will be will be active, and then we're working through the numbers as far as uh, potential elevation as well um, from the practice squad. I'll, we'll keep you guys posted on that, and then everybody else will go in without an injury designation. Besides, uh, just the Caleb Evans will go in questionable, seeing how he responds to you know the, the week of work he's had going into the weekend. Kevin said Cashman's close. To, like, do you expect him? Yeah, I mean it's. I do, I do, and it's just one of those things where, um, you know, if if we let him, he'd probably try to push through, um, but you just don't want to set him back, uh, hoping to get him back. And once he has a good week of prep and practice, uh, you know, obviously a huge important part of our defense. We we definitely want to get him back as soon as we feel like he's ready to go. Kevin, how are you planning to approach things on the offensive line? Yeah, you know, Cam had a you know really really impressive start. I mean, just been working with uh, Coop and, and Sean and had really good practice reps when he's been in there. Um, we've got a good plan in place, and, and uh, I'm excited to see how it all plays out. We've got a good plan in place, Ben, and I'm excited to see how it all plays out. I've been having here for the first couple of days. What have you learned about him? Uh, you know, really smart. Um, I've really enjoyed, you know, the first thing I always like to do is, you know, when those guys arrive, get to spend some one-on-one time with them and, and just kind of allow them to, you know, can't make up for a lot of time on relationships I've built with a lot of these players. Uh, but I just like them to know who they're going to be playing for and gives me a chance to get to know them. Uh, obviously, his background is, uh, you know, very established, a lot of starts, a lot of high, high-quality play. And uh, I just want him to know kind of what we're all about here, uh, his, the expectations he should have of his teammates and the type of locker room we've built here and our players have built. Uh, and then just as he's gotten into the actual football, you know, the tackle position is one of those where, um, you know, it's once you know the language, you're just doing the similar things that you've been doing your whole career, whether it's pass or run game. There might be some nuances here and there where we, you know, we're spending a little extra time on, um, but to be here as quick as he's, uh, you know, gotten here and gotten up to speed, you know, allows us to feel good about him being up on Sunday. Kevin, yeah, we talked to people this week about that win two years ago, the comeback win. Multiple people have mentioned you not pressing out of halftime, not going into the hurry-up offense. Yeah. What do you remember about just obviously two years ago, but why you weren't pressing as a head coach and play caller? In that well, I think it was, um, you know, knowing that you can't you can't score you know, that many times or that many points without getting the first one. And pressing uh, early in that half uh, would have been, I think, sending the wrong message to our whole team uh, because so much of what took place in the first half uh, was correctable. There were some self-inflicted things. There were some things the Colts did to force some negative plays uh, that I felt like we could, you know, offense, defense, and special teams correct. So let's just go play good football, and then we'll let the game dictate, uh, you know, based upon – you know, how many bullets we got left, how much time we got left, uh, how we need to go about it. But it was about getting that first touchdown. It was about, you know, dealing with some adversity within the game, you know, thinking you got two turnovers that plays, I believe, got ruled dead or, you know, forward progress maybe or down by whatever it was. Uh, but we think maybe we got some, you know, chances at picking up a ball and running it back for a touchdown. That's a real easy way to, to come back and those get taken off the board. Okay, then we got to get a stop. Then we got to get a fourth and short stop. And uh, and it just was kind of can we compound the interest of success um, in a short amount of time or at least in an efficient way, knowing you've basically cut the football game in half and caused a lot of the problems we had. Uh, but a lot of what we've built here, you know, how we deal with adversity is not in the moment we think about that. We build it ahead of time. Uh, based upon a lot of principles that mean a lot to me. So for me to be different in those moments um, would probably not signify the most consistency to our team. 
Uh, and then I've got total trust, and I did at the moment, and I do now, for our team's ability to respond um, when we need to. And that doesn't always equal uh, the result that maybe uh, people will uh, either react to or think that you know everything's you know this, that, and the other needs to happen after a game. Um, we've got to stay consistent. We've got to improve. We've got to do the things that we need to do both in game, like we did that day, um, and big picture wise. You know, tough, tough couple games here, even in the present. Uh, you know, against two good teams in five days, one on the road on short rest, no excuses. We got to just continue to improve uh, and and chase that progression and try to get a win. And yeah, yesterday talked to Justin. He said that you had sort of dialed down some things offensively for this week. And I was curious, like, is that just sort of the normal course of week to week stuff? Did you kind of have any more of a philosophical? No, change? I think as a you know, I just think coaching in general, um, you know, as much as we try to. Uh, hold the pen as much as we try to, you know, give our players an advantage for their benefit. Um, it's just a constant evaluation and reflection of, you know, you know, the value received off of the things we do. It could be great on one play, and then it could cause uh, some things to be, you know, either hard to execute if the noise is more than you think it is, or uh, putting a little bit more on Sam's plate. And hey, do we need to do that? Well, it'd be great to do it, but let's be smart about this and treat each individual phase as how do we build the best game plan to have success this week. So I think, uh, you know, to, to the naked eye, it might look the same. To our players, they might uh, be able to, they might feel that way. And that's hopefully the, that's the intent is our players to feel like, man, I, I love this game plan. We're sharp. We should be able to be crisp and efficient. Um, but at the same time, from our lens as coaches, we're still accomplishing the things we want to do to help our guys have success. And how close is Dalton Reisner to being ready? How do you feel about? Yeah, he's him? healthy. Yeah, he's healthy, and um, that's you know kind of you know under discussion right now. Um, but I, I feel great about you know having Dalton available in here, and um, you know we'll work through that here in the in the real short term. And Dalton knows that uh, he he's he's got my confidence, and he'll be ready to go when called upon. And I uh, feel very fortunate to have him here, and I like the way he's attacked this process, uh, especially now that he's been able to use the time. Uh, with really no training camp and and uh, no real reps, you know, to build into this, he's been able to use this window uh, to be ready to go when his number's called. Kevin, have you seen any maturity out of Ivan Pace over these past few games and try to, especially the green dot? I know he likes to do that. Yeah, I, I definitely. I mean, I think his communication has been really good. Um, just hearing kind of, uh, I get an opportunity to hear, you know, the dialogue from Flo to him, uh, both the call. Some coaching points, some, uh, hey, make sure we do this, or this is our adjustment. Hey, let's get this gamer stunt up front. Um, hey, I want to send this guy, that guy, whatever it is. And all of it's being communicated, and that's not always easy to do uh, when, uh, you know, the, you're playing snap after snap. He's played a lot of snaps for us. And, uh, you know, being able to handle all that and then also go make tackles and play fast and be the violent kind of aggressive football player that he is. So I absolutely think great question. I think it's it's showing up. And, and I think Ivan would tell you there's uh, still ways that he's going to continue improving as a really good young player in this league. What have you seen just from the defense this week, maybe in meetings or just on the field that you feel like just stands out in terms of how they've approached responding from this last year? Yeah, I think... Uh, there's been, you know, really a team-wide emphasis on, uh, just like always, but just more of an emphasis on just intentional action. Uh, what does that mean? That could be as a coaching staff. Uh, you know, we talked about some of the things offensively, uh, some of the things uh, our players can, you know, have total control of. That, you know, let's see it. Let's see them put it, put together a practice week like we just did. Uh, let's see uh, just how many times we can. Uh, stack really good days and, and just see what that looks like, especially getting to come back home in front of our great fans, home environment on Sunday night. What more could you possibly want? And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see kind of after not only the defense, but our whole team um, kind of where we're at with a, a lot of collective things hopefully coming together. Um, and just like any game, with, not without adversity, we're going to have to respond at some point in the game. Could be early, could be late. Uh, but I want to see us put together four quarters of good football. Penalties that you've brought a few times. Is there anything that's sort of been a trend there of, of why those have happened, delay games, false starts that you discovered kind of looking back this week? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, some of it just the good old fashioned procedural stuff. Uh, you know, Sam has done so many 
really high level good things, especially throwing the football for us. But um, I think we all got to remember sometimes uh, that uh, it is his first uh, first year starting, and we tried to uh, prepare him as best we could. Uh, and there's st- still going to be some times in games where uh, the urgency of just kind of playing a lot of football comes in play. Uh, you know, just I think he's done a, a really good job improving on that. Um, as he kind of goes through his process of preparation, you know, we've got to do some things to help him, you know, shorten up that play clock uh, when we break the huddle every snap in practice and try to put us up against it a little bit. But uh, there's some other times where, you know, part of the, the bigger picture of the orchestrating of our offense, can we make it a little easier on him? Can we make it easier on the guys around him to have clarity? Uh, always, you know, intentional with that plan. Um, but at the same time, never at a detriment to, to what we think gives us the best chance to win in an NFL offense trying to move the ball and score points. So there's a good balance there. Um, I think there's been some, you know, some early down, uh, you know, either a guy just trying to play with play style and maybe gets a hold or, uh, you know, maybe there's a play here and there that, you know, penalty flag goes on the field and afterwards, oh, you know what, maybe that wasn't. And we got to treat each one of those as their own, but collectively understand uh, we've got to solve that problem and rectify the fact that we all know uh, when our offense meets together, uh, there's not one player in that room that doesn't know that when we haven't had those things happen, Matt, we've we've moved the football and, and had a, a good chance to score points. So uh, knowing that, how, how, how can we do our jobs as coaches and our players to really drive this thing to a place where we have clean pre- and post-snap execution? That's what we're hunting, and I think if we do that, it, it'll be a, uh, a good result because we've seen it. Uh, you know, we've seen it at, at uh, you know, in some of those, you know, when we were 5-0 and and we're looking back, uh, you know, there were some really strong stretches of that. And then, you know, I, I try not to paint things with broad brushes of this is the whole season and this is all we are or this is all we aren't. Um, I try to look at it in a way that can provide ultimate clarity of what I want uh, out of our guys to prepare and, and how we're going to play. Last one. Remember what you thought of Joe Flacco, 2008 combine? Yeah, I just remember standing with Matt Ryan, who wasn't going to throw uh, in the second group. Uh, you know, we had just kind of gotten done running our 40s, and Matt probably didn't even do that, actually. But uh, I was standing there, and uh, I saw Joe throw a couple of those goal balls. And, uh, you know, I, I, I started thinking, am I, am I good enough to maybe not throw? And, you know, because that guy can flat out spin it. Uh, he throws it all over the yard. He's, you know, a, a mountain of a man and can see the whole field and has seen everything now throughout his career, done so many high, high-level things. I got so much respect for what Joe has accomplished in this league and um, always been a fan of his. And, and uh, I just wasn't that day at the Combine for what he was going to make me look like a few minutes later. Um, but, yeah, Joe's a, he's going to be a challenge. You know, he's going to be a challenge. We have to be dialed in because you make a mistake against a quarterback of, of, of his caliber, both mentally and then his ability to truly touch every blade of grass on the field with the ball. Um, you got to be dialed in.